What's up? So based on the iron pathway in the body, we can determine several values. We can determine the amount of iron in the blood, so-called serum iron. We can determine the amount of transferring molecules in the blood by transferring iron binding capacity. We can determine the amount of transferring molecules that carries iron by the percent saturation of transferring. And we can determine the amount of iron in the storage size as bone marrow by the amount of ferritin in the blood, so-called serum ferritin. To simplify, we can think about the iron in the blood as about the food on our table. So it's the product that we can use straight away to produce initial reticulocytes and then red blood cells. Ferritin is the food in the storage site as sala. It's awesome. Look, I mean, I don't mean to sound arrogant or anything, but I am the greatest botanist on this planet. So. To keep storage site fully filled with iron, ferritin use transferring molecules. Transferring molecules are sort of delivery boys. They meticulously search for dietary iron. Once they find iron, initially they deliver this iron for production of red blood cells, but if serum iron level is ok, then they deliver blood to ferritin that serves as storage site. So in normal condition, we have enough amount of iron on the table, enough amount of iron in the storage site, and because of this, we do not need many delivery boys in form of transferring. In normal condition, for every three transferring molecules, we have one iron molecule. But what happens with iron deficiency when there will be no dietary iron in the local stores? The goal of the entire iron metabolism is to keep normal level of serum iron, because exactly this iron we use for production of reticulocytes and red blood cells. And without red blood cells we cannot survive. So it's essential for us to keep normal level of red blood cells production. At first, it's not an emergency situation. Organism thinks that iron will income to the stores. It's just a matter of time. You know, some temporary supply problems. So in this situation, initially we will use iron from our storage site. Because there is no point of starving while you have enough amount of iron in reserve. So at this point, we take iron from ferritin and transfer it into the serum iron fraction. So as a result, only the level of ferritin will decrease and everything else will be normal. And because serum iron is normal, we are still capable to produce normal red blood cells. Then, after some period of time, organism begins to understand that probably this iron deficiency is not a temporary problem, but rather it will be a chronic problem. So organisms still continue to consume iron from the storage site, so the level of ferritin will continue to decrease. But in addition to this, organisms send more delivery boys in form of transferring to search for iron that organism desperately needs. So the level of transferring will increase, we call this increase in transferring iron binding capacity. But the level of serum iron will be still normal. So organisms still have enough iron on the table, and because of this, we are still capable to produce normal red blood cells. With increase in transferrin in combination with normal level of iron, the saturation of transferrin will decrease. The way to look at this is that normally, for every iron molecule, we have three transferrin molecules. But now with increase in transferrin, there are nine transferrin molecules for only one iron molecule which is basically 11%, so it's basically the reason why transferring saturation decreases. At the third stage, such huge consumption of iron from ferritin causes ferritin depletion, so there are practically no iron stores left in form of ferritin, so the level of ferritin will become very very low. Low ferritin level stimulates production of more transferring molecules to search for dietary iron. So transferring iron binding capacity will increase even further. But what is the most important, with such low ferritin level, organism enters into the saving mode. And because of this, organism begins to use less iron molecules for production of hemoglobin. So the amount of serum iron begins to decrease, and simultaneously with this, because serum iron decreases, 
bone marrow begins to produce less amount of reticulocytes and erythrocytes. Also, because without iron we cannot produce hemoglobin, with decrease in serum iron, bone marrow begins to produce smaller red blood cells with lesser concentration of hemoglobin. As a result, so-called microcytes are formed, which are the smaller forms of normal red blood cells. Also in blood analysis, we will see decrease in hemoglobin, and decrease in hemoglobin we call anemia. Decrease in size of red blood cells we will see on blood analysis as decrease in MCV. MCV becomes less than 80, and red blood cells with MCV less than 80 we call microcytes. The point is, stretch the rations four more days is a real dick punch. So, as we see with iron deficiency, the value that becomes affected the first is decrease in ferritin. The next marker that reacts is increase in transferring iron binding capacity, and only after serum iron will decrease. And only with decrease in serum iron, anemia will develop, also red blood cell count will decrease, and microcytes will be produced. So, the most precise marker to diagnose iron deficiency is ferritin. Interesting that with treatment, entire process will work in completely reverse direction. After the intake of iron, the first value that will normalize is serum iron, because it's iron that we use for hemoglobin production. With normalization of serum iron, the production of red blood cells will be restored, and the first cells that will increase are reticulocytes. The maximal increase in reticulocytes count usually occurs on 7 to 10 days of treatment, and we call this reticulocytes crisis. So, if reticulocytes crisis develops, this means that treatment is working ok. Then reticulocytes will mature into erythrocytes, so first of all we will produce red blood cells that have normal size, and after the entire red blood cell count will be restored. Also with income of iron, we stop using ferritin. So the amount of ferritin begin to increase, and with increase in ferritin, the amount of transferrin begin to decrease. With normalization of serum iron, now iron that income to our organism begin to accumulate in form of ferritin. So the amount of ferritin continue to increase, and with increase in ferritin, the amount of transferrin decrease and reach normal value 3 to 1. And finally, after normalization of serum iron, and after normalization of transferrin, Ferritin reach initial values, this full package of iron inside it. So the first value that normalize is serum iron, the second value that normalize is transferrin, and the last value that normalize is ferritin. So we treat patient with iron deficiency until normalization of ferritin. Okay. Fine. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 